Pastor East Udanaba. At Charisma, we are empowered and inspired to know the Spirit, follow the Spirit, live by the Spirit, and minister by the Spirit. Starting from Monday the 30th of October to Friday the 3rd of November 2023. Time, morning sessions 9 a.m. Evening sessions 6 p.m. Venue, Desert Pastures, Bogotanga. It is time for you to come to this great event for every gift of God in you to be unleashed to make an impact on the world and to bless yourself. I will see you there. God bless you. Bye-bye. Get ready to walk in favor and receive gifts from the Holy Spirit. East Udanaba Ministries presents Charisma with Pastor East Udanaba. At Charisma, we are empowered and inspired to know the Spirit, follow the Spirit, live by the Spirit, a minister by the Spirit. Starting from Monday the 30th of October to Friday the 3rd of November 2023. Time, morning sessions 9 a.m. Evening sessions 6 p.m. Venue, Desert Pastures, Bogota. It is time for you to come to this great event for every gift of God in you to be unleashed to make an impact on the world and to bless yourself. I will see you there. God bless you. Bye-bye. Get ready to walk in favor and receive gifts from the Holy Spirit. East Udanaba Ministries presents Charisma with Pastor East Udanaba. At Charisma, we are empowered and inspired to know the Spirit, follow the Spirit, live by the Spirit, and minister. By the Spirit. Starting from Monday the 30th of October to Friday the 3rd of November 2023. Time, morning sessions 9 a.m. Evening sessions 6 p.m. Venue, Desert Pastures, Bogota. It is time for you to come to this great event for every gift of God in you to be unleashed to make an impact on the world and to bless yourself. I will see you there. God bless you. Bye-bye. Get ready to walk in favor and receive gifts from the Holy Spirit. Lift up your voice and give him praise. It is charisma. Lift up your voice. Hallelujah. This morning our Father made us to understand that until we are restless, we can never have our permanent rest. 
If you want to have a permanent rest, it means that you have to learn to be a wrestler. Are you with me? Our prayer, our second prayer is, Father, make us restless. Are you with me? Are you with me? Lift up your right hand with me. Say in the name of Jesus, I refuse to stare at negative things happen and I don't make a move. Tonight, I resolve to fight back. Lift up your voice in the name of Jesus. We are praying, Father, empower us in this charisma to be restless in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice, the grace to fight. In this month of war, I receive the grace to fight back. Lift up your voice and pray that prayer. In this month of war and in this week of charisma, I receive the grace to fight back. I receive the grace to win battles. I receive the grace to take up this fight in the name of Jesus. In this week of charisma, I am putting on the armor of God. In this week of charisma, we will confront principalities. We will confront powers. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice, somebody. Lift up your voice, Shakatu Kata. Sekia Paka Paka Roko Paria Paka. Zeta Paka 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 Paka. Zeta Paka Wata. Zeta Paka Paka Wata. Zeta Kata. Shaka Paku Wata. Shaka Paka Paka. Lift up your voice. Zeta Paka 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 Wata. Zeta Paka 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 I'm putting on the full armor of God. I am ready for war this week. I am ready for war this month. I am ready for war. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Zapata, <laughs> 
Wash this. Wash this. Maybe this will help. In Genesis chapter 32, we are told of a man by name Jacob who we all know. The Bible says he was afraid of his brother. There was, he was afraid of his brother Esau and 400 men that were coming, approaching him. And he knew very well they were coming to attack him. But you see, the Bible talks about the fact that when he was left alone, he didn't sleep. The Bible says, and he wrestled. Are you with me? Now, this is what I want you to do. Tell you, look at your neighbor and say, Neighbor, leave me alone. I am about to enter a time of prayer. Come on, somebody, create some space around you because we are about to enter a wrestling, a wrestling tournament. Are you with me? You got to be alone to fight this battle. When your family leaves you, when your property leaves you, when your business is not working like it should, and you are alone and nothing is happening, this is the best time to fight. This is not the time to pity yourself. This is the time to create some space and fight. Are you ready to fight? Lift up your right hand with me. Say in the name of Jesus, tonight I create space around me and I enter into a moment of prayer and I declare I'm winning this battle lift up your voice in the name of Jesus I am winning this battle I am winning this battle lift up your voice declare to yourself I am winning this battle I am winning this battle I am winning this battle this sickness won't kill me this disease won't kill me this problem won't kill me lift up your voice and say to yourself I am winning this battle lift up your voice in prayer and say tonight is that night I've got to restore my destiny from the hands of wicked men tonight is that night I am going to take my destiny the destiny of my children from the enemy tonight is that night I am going to pray fervently. I am going to pray with my strength. And I'm going to take back anything the devil stole from me in this season of charisma. Lift up your voice. Declare to yourself, I am winning this battle. Enough of the embarrassment, enough of the mockery, enough of the shame, enough of the pain, enough of the struggle, enough of the crying, enough of the heartbreak. This week, I'm taking things personal. This week, I'm challenging myself to engage heaven and to engage the altar of the Almighty to take up this battle in my hands and no matter what I am winning this fight no matter what I am winning this fight lift up your voice somebody if you are connecting online pray the same prayer we are winning this fight together lift up your voice and pray that prayer Lift up your voice and pray. Lift up your voice. 
Lift up your voice and pray that prayer, somebody. Lift up your voice. How long are you going to be staring at the problems tormenting your life when we have a big God? Lift up your voice. Not this week, not this month. Devil, not today. Lift up your voice. Watch this. You see, until you learn to be a fighter, you are going to lose your resources. The Bible says when you read the whole of the Genesis chapter 32, the Bible says, and Jacob divided his properties into two because he was afraid that you end up losing everything. His net worth came to half. Now, when you fear to fight, the other thing is that you lose some family members. The Bible says, and he took his two wives and his children and he took them far from and he was now left alone when you fear to fight you will lose loved ones if you fear to fight you will lose properties but that night when he was left alone after fighting he had the confidence to face his brother are you with me we are going to pray tonight that father give me the grace I need to fight for my family. I need to fight for my properties. I need to fight for my ministry. I need to fight for my business. If you don't fight, nobody is going to do it for the family. That's why you are here tonight. Are you with me? Lift up your right hand. Say in the name of Jesus. Tonight, I receive the grace to fight for my family. Say, I receive the grace to fight for my business. Say, I receive the grace to fight for my ministry. Lift up your voice and bring that prayer. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. and pray that prayer. I am a Keep praying, somebody. Lift up your voice and fight. Fight for your family. Fight for your ministry. Fight for your business. Lift up your voice, somebody. This morning, our daddy mentioned one of the principalities is the principality 
that inflicts poverty. Those of us who follow the morning session, we are going to pray. If any principality assigned in my life or the life of my family, I bind you. Are you with me? We are going to pray and bind any principality assigned in your because daddy mentioned that some of the principalities are released for nations, some are released for regions, some are released for villages and families. And any principality that is assigned in your life or the life of your family members, we are binding that principality and stopping their works. Are you with me? Lift up your voice and pray that prayer. We bind any principality of poverty assigned in my life, assigned in the life of my family. Lift up your voice in the name of Jesus. Bind that principality of poverty in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and bind that principality. Lift up your voice and bind that principality of poverty. Lift up your voice. Zaparo kaparo kata. Zeparia kapakaria paka. Lift up your voice, somebody. Bind that principality. Zakata kapata pakata. Stop their activities. Lift up your voice. Zapaku na paka for we wrestle not against flesh and blood against principalities and tonight we are binding any principality inflicting poverty in the name of Jesus we bind that principality from attacking the members of desert pastures we bind that principality from attacking friends and partners of Eastwood and Naba ministry lift up your voice and bind that principality Lift up your voice, somebody. Lift up your voice, somebody. By the principality, wrestle your destiny out of the hands of that principality. Lift up your voice, Rakapa Kutakapata. Now watch this. Command any principality that you know Job 20, the verse number 15 talks about he has swallow, swallowed up riches and you vomit it out. Command any principality that has swallowed riches in your family to vomit it out tonight. Lift up your voice in the name of Jesus. Command principalities that have swallowed off businessmen in your family. Command that principality to vomit the money out in the name of Jesus. We inflict their digestive system. We command a gastric infection in their system they are vomiting out our money command them to vomit it out any money they have swallowed they will vomit it out tonight 
lift up your voice command the principality vomit it out vomit out our cities vomit out our dollars vomit out our pound standing command the principality vomit it out vomit it out in the name of Jesus they are declare they are vomiting it out. 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 In the name of Jesus, somebody pray. Declare they are vomiting it out. This week of charisma, I receive my money back. I receive my properties back. I receive my prosperity back. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice, somebody. Pray. Lift up your voice, Zeta Paka 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 Command the principality to vomit it out. Command the principality to vomit it out. Zeta Paka 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 Lift up your voice, somebody. Rekata Baba 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 Lift up your voice, somebody. You see, this morning our daddy caught a revelation of a death warrant that was sent in. We are praying tonight and we are going to boomerang any death warrant hanging around anybody in the church. Are you with me? We are sending it back to send that. Lift up your right hand. Say in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Tonight, Tonight, I reverse any death warrant around my life. Pray in the name of Jesus and boomerang that death sentence in the name of Jesus. My family is secured. My family is preserved in the name of Jesus. Reverse that death warrant in the name of Jesus. Speak life into your family. Speak life into your life, uh, lift up your voice uh, and declare in the name of Jesus uh, back to sender, uh, back to the pit of hell. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, we reverse it, uh, we reverse it, uh, we reverse it uh, by the superior power. In the name of Jesus, uh, we stop death uh, from progressing into the church, uh, we stop death uh, from advancing into the Church, we send you back to the pit of hell. Not members of the 
Brothers and pastors, uh, not members, uh, friends and partners of EAM, uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, not members uh, of Fountain Gate Chapel Worldwide, uh, not the body of Christ, we stop every death one attack, we abolish uh, premature death, nobody would die before their time, we come against sudden death, we come against death traps, we come against plot to take lives in the church, we prohibit death in our midst and we declare the fact we receive life and life abundant. So we prophesy the grace to walk in the fullness of the glory. We declare angelic protection on the highways and the byways. We declare our houses are secure. We declare the place of our work. No enchantment. No divination. May their traps catch their own head. May their plots not materialize. May their arrows be reversed to center Zakatuka taka 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 Zakata taka taka Watch this Watch this Look at somebody and say I am not a Christmas fowl Anybody planning to use anybody's life for Christmas Backfire That thing is going to Fire, we cannot be used for Christmas. Are you with me? Anybody planning a Christmas fowl in this church? It cannot happen. I am not a Christmas fowl. Lift up your voice and pray. You can't touch me. You can't touch me. You can't touch members of my family. We are going to cross into next year with full life in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice. Enough of the destruction this year. This last quarter of 2023, we stop death, we stop bad news, we stop negativity. Lift up your voice and pray that prayer. Thirty-first December will come here and celebrate. The enemy go shy. You didn't hear me. I said the enemy go shy. No sickness, no accident, no sudden attack. Let them devise sickness, it won't work. Let them plot accident, it won't work. Let them plot gunshot and arm robbery attack. It won't work. We are heavily protected. We are heavily guarded. The blood of the lamp has been released for our protection. Angelic surveillance is our portion. Lift up your voice and say, it, I cannot be touched. I cannot be harmed. I cannot be touched. I cannot be harmed. Pray that prayer. I cannot be touched. I cannot be harmed. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. We have five minutes to pray that prayer. Lift up your voice. We have just five minutes to go. 
Lift up your voice. I cannot be touched. I cannot be hurt. Lift up your voice. <laughs> He and you want to declare to yourself I'm going to live the rest of this year in prosperity and in pleasure are you with me declare to yourself I release prosperity I will enjoy pleasure. Lift up your voice in the name of Jesus. Declare to yourself the rest of 2023. I am going to live in prosperity. I'm going to live in pleasure in the name of Jesus. Just declare that to yourself in the name of Jesus. Rakuta, Zekwata, Zakata, Tata, Tapa, Zedaba, Tata, 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 Tata. That I'm going to live in prosperity. That I'm going to live all the rest of my days in pleasure. Lift up your voice and declare that prayer. Enough of the funerals. At least Yanko party book Enough of the funerals. Enough of the burial ceremonies. Let there be some celebrations in the name of Jesus. We are done wearing black. Black, 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 no doors. At least my answer, white, white, kakra, my tree has come. I mean, at least lift up your voice and declare you are going to live the rest of 2023 in pleasure. In this charisma, you are releasing the grace for prosperity, the grace for pleasure. Lift up your voice in the name of Jesus. And why don't you lift up your voice and thank God for answered prayers? Somebody lift up your voice and give him praise for answered prayer. Thank him in the name of Jesus. Celebrate God for answered prayer. Oh, celebrate. Don't be in a hurry to worship to receive the choir. Just bless the name of the Lord in thanksgiving. Open up your voice and thank the name of the Lord in the name of Jesus. If you are online, type it. Thank you, Jesus. Share the broadcast. Invite somebody. Charisma is on. And it is your season to be empowered by the spirit of the living God. Somebody in the name of Jesus. Bless his holy most name. Exalt his name in the name of Jesus. Father, we are grateful for tonight. This session is empowered. This session is blessed. Our Father, our Father is empowered power to be a blessing to us as usual and we thank you father for the spirit of god that is in this place and we know our lives will be the same again thank you for grace thank you for an opening in the name of jesus father we declare in the name of jesus that tonight for the first night of charisma is blessed and father we will enjoy in your presence in the name of jesus amen clap your hands and let's welcome agape Lift up your two hands, lift up your two hands. Just begin to wave your hands unto the Lord and open up your mouth and begin to glorify the name of our King. Lift up your voice on this place. Let's worship Him. Power and mind, He belongs to our God forever. Power and mind, he belongs to our God forever and ever. I 
just lift up your hand and sing this song. Power of my He belongs to our God. Come on, everybody. Forever and ever. Power of Power of When I in a sun 
Yes, I worship you, Lord.
In Jesus' name, Amen. You may be seated and the Lord bless your life. Somebody give a big, big, big clap offering to Jesus. Amen. Okay, this is the night number one, night number one of charisma. And I'm praying that God will bless your life. Paolo, thank you so much for leading us to worship. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. Initially, when I saw Paolo, I made a mistake. I thought it was Jeff Adosi. So I'm like, ah, since when did Jeff start leading worship? Then I looked at him well. I thought, okay, this one looks a little taller than, or much taller than Jeff. But they, they, look, they look the same, especially with um, Jeff's pretentious beard. And Paolo's beard is genuine, but Jeff's old. Mama Comfort, it's good to see you. And um, thank you for being in the house. And Mama Rosemont is in the house. Thank you so much. 
Pastor Eric, thank you so much. All the way from Navrungo, shall we welcome Pastor Eric to the house. Amen. Now, tonight I'm going to preach a message and when I finish, we are going to pray. When I finish, we are going to pray. Charisma is about knowing the spirit, following the spirit, living by the spirit, and then ministering by the spirit. Because we realize that the influence and the impact of the Holy Spirit in the life of the church and the body of Christ is dwindling. Increasingly, we are depending on our human strength. Increasingly, we are depending on our human mind. We are depending on the things, the, the way we think, and we are applying all our human energy to live the life of God and also to do the work of God. So Jesus said that it is the spirit that quickens, the flesh profits nothing, and the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The Bible said, upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possession. The verse number 21 says that, and saviors will come up on Mount Zion, and they shall judge the house of Israel. So they shall judge the house of Esau. Now, for the saviors to be able to be impactful and make the impact they are supposed to make, these saviors must operate in the spirit but not in the flesh. If you are a savior and you are called to your family, you are called to your business, you are called to your community, you are called to your ministry, and as a savior, you decide to walk in the flesh, you are going to fail. And and that's because the Savior's mandate involves dealing with spiritual things. Dealing with spiritual things. No matter what you are called to, do, to be, if you are called to be a teacher or a nurse, a lawyer, an engineer, whatever thing you are called to do, along the line, you'll be dealing with principalities and powers. Even if you are a fitter or you sell food, you would deal with with principalities and powers along the line. For those of us who are pastors, our case is serious. As for us, almost every minute, every second, you are dealing with something that is spiritual. And so you cannot do the work of the ministry in the flesh. So Paul, writing to the Ephesians, said that, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And we are going to be on this particular scripture from in the morning up to the time we finish on Friday. This is the only verse we are looking at. We'll be bringing in other scriptures here and there. And then, you know, I mean, we, we, we will use those scriptures to buttress our point. But he said, for we wrestle not. And in the morning, I made us aware that Christianity is a wrestle. Somebody say, Christianity is wrestling. Come on, say it again. Christianity is wrestling. I mean, you know what, people? Life is a struggle. Life is wrestling. It can never be easy. If you are raising a family, it is wrestling. You are doing a business, it is wrestling. You are doing a church, it is wrestling. Whatever you do, it's wrestling. Look at even a child that is born. When the child is growing up, it's wrestling. The child is falling and getting up. The child has to learn to crawl. And the child will go to school. They will beat up the child. The child will run home and go back to the school. Life is full of wrestling. And that is why people that are faint-hearted, life is not for them. Even life in the jungle. If you want to know how life is, sometimes just sit down and watch National Geographic okay or wildlife just sit down and look at all these cheaters and and and, and they are they are they are they are in the bush and the way they are they are constantly at risk and look at even snakes and look at lions and all of them elephants something is always threatening to take them out so we wrestle not against flesh and blood and the flesh and blood means we don't wrestle against mortal entities but we wrestle against principalities are he principalities we wrestle against principalities and powers and i started talking about the principalities but i haven't defined principalities yet now unfortunately i'm going to be defining principalities tomorrow during the zoom meeting not even tonight so i will get to the definition of principalities tomorrow morning at 6 a.m and that is very good for those of you who don't follow the 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 the, the 6 a.m meeting but 
tomorrow is not even 6 a.m it's 5 a.m so tomorrow is 5 and it's the last day of the war and um, it happens to just fall on principalities so tomorrow i'm going to attempt defining what the principalities are and then we go into it but you know people I told you in the morning that the man called Jacob wrestled with an entity. That entity happened to be the epiphany, one of the epiphanies of Christ. One, one of the manifestations or the appearances of Jesus in the Old Testament, even before he was manifested in the flesh. And here was, here was Jacob wrestling with this angel until the breaking of the day. And the angel said, let me go because the day is breaking. And he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So a human being contended with an unseen entity. And people, we are always contending with unseen entities. You know, and today, I don't want to scare pastors. I remember that. I heard that when I finished the meeting today, some of the pastors were discussing so what would they do with the demons and the things, the areas they call them to go and pray, go for this, go for that. Now, I may answer some of your questions today. But Jacob's victorious experience with the man who wrestled with him is the exact opposite of the experience of the sons of Sceva. The Lord ministered to me today and said, you guys are in the season and the generation of the sons of Sceva. <laughs> Very soon I will start going into details. The sons of Sceva. I'm telling you there are many sons of Sceva around. The sons of Sceva are counterfeit believers. <laughs> and these sons of Sceva attempted casting out the devil or evil spirits in the name of Jesus Christ. Although they had no personal relationship with him, they ended up being overrun by the demons. You know, when demons overrun a person, these people were overrun. The evil spirits in the possessed man attacked them viciously, inflicting wounds on them. The demons told the young man that they knew Jesus and they also knew Paul, but they demanded to know the IDs or identities of these sons of Sceva. Before the sons of Sceva could present their dubious credentials, the demon-infested man pounced on them and stripped them naked and they only managed to escape with great difficulty. Look at the story. And then certain vagabond Jews, you know, because of the way we use the word vagabond, you know, I mean, when, when we say, uh, somebody says vagabond, <laughs> vagabond, we don't even know the meaning, vagabond, bastard. But the word vagabond in this particular context does not mean what you know as vagabond. The word vagabond here, you know, just like the way, um, Cain told God, he said, I'll be a vagabond. He said, vagabond and a figurative. And anybody who finds me will kill me. So the vagabond there is not what you know as vagabond. What this word means here is that the person is a wanderer. Okay? So the person is itinerant. So these were itinerant people that were moving from place to place. So the word vagabond means itinerant. It means to wander about. It means to facilitate it means to come all around and it also means to fetch a compass. That means just move around, come to the same place. Move around, come to the same place. So that is what the vagabond Jews were doing. And they were just moving around as exorcists, okay? Exorcists. The Bible said certain vagabond Jews and it said they were, they were exorcists. Huh? Exorcists. That means that these people were binding people and things. <laughs> So they managed to learn some art where they were binding things and people through the use of oaths, an oath or casting spells on them. So literally, they were conjurers or magicians. So these people were conjurers and they were magicians. And okay, <laughs> conjurers and magicians. Now, they were the sons of a certain 
man who was called Skiva. Skiva was a chief, was a chief priest of the Jews. He may not have been the high priest, but he was a high-ranking Sanhedrin member. But it is believed that he had some ability where he learned some magical arts or some conjuring capacity and had the ability to cast spells on people and, and use demonic forces on people. And his children followed in the same direction. Now, unfortunately for these children, one day, they went and encountered a demon. And this particular demon was not one of the easy ones they were handling. Listen, if you are not called by God, and you are holding anointing oil all over the place, different colors, prayer cloths, all over the place, thinking that the power of the pastors who are ministering and doing well is in oil, one of these days, you will meet something that will let you flee. Now, so these men, seven of them, they were going about everywhere, we command you in the name of Jesus, whom Paul um, preaches, and um, come out. The demon said, Jesus, I know, and Paul, I know, but you, who are you? They pounce on him, and the Bible said that they wounded him, and this guy, these guys ran away practically naked. Now the Lord ministered something to me which I want to tell you. But before I go into the practical application of this, let me tell you this. Skiva represented a generation. His children represented a generation. Be careful as a minister of God that you don't fall into the trap of being a son of Skiva. Skiva himself, a Levite, because he came from the lineage of, the, of Levi or, or Levi. And then he resorted to these magical arts. His children also picked it up. But you know, people, Skiva's situation is not as painful as the situation that involved a man by the name of Eli. Eli, in 1 Samuel 4, from the verse number 15, Eli was a prophet of God, or a priest of God Almighty, who occupied the position in the temple. Eli may not have been the best person, but we are not told that he was evil either. This was the man who became the mentor of the man called Samuel and grew Samuel. This was the man who prayed and blessed Hannah and Samuel came up. Now here is Eli serving in the priesthood but his children began to take bribes and pervert judgment and do all kinds of strange things. When people were cooking food the sons of Eli would take flesh hook, dip it in the food, and whatever meat they grabbed, they would take it out. In other words, Eli's children were ministering for food. In our generation, it will shock you. That there are people that are in the ministry, not because of souls, not because of the kingdom of God, but because of food. And they have the flesh hook in their hand. So these are the sons of Eli. One day there was a war. And in that battle, the Philistines beat up the people of God and they carried the Ark of the Covenant and they took it away. By the time this happened, Eli was 98 years old and he was blind. The Bible said, now Eli, now, 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 now. That word now is a very disturbing word. Because today is now, but tomorrow will also be now. Let me tell you these people. Be very careful how you are living your life. Be very careful how your children are also growing up. 
be very careful the kind of ministry you are building because there will be another day called now and on that day you'll be blind and you cannot see on that day you will be weak and you are not as strong as you are on that day you may not be this kind of person you are today a day is coming called now because you will not be like this forever you won't be like this forever you will not be like this forever and that is why sometimes in ministry you want to be showing everybody around you this is where that is this is where that is this is where that is pastor mike check this one pastor aaron check this one take this one and do it pastor mike do this one um pastor mike you are the executive pastor now anything administrative anything organizational anything in this house do it sometimes take this pulpit occupy it mommy here is this here is that. and that is because you know what there is a day called called now and when now arrives and you have not prepared for now your life will be a very miserable life so now caught up with eli now this thing i'm not talking about now don't look for it in the bible in the book because you will not see it because this book changes anytime i pick it up so now eli was 98 years old and his eyes were dim now i know that you are believing god that you will remain like this forever and especially the people who deceive you may you live to be 100 and when you are 50 and you are looking very old they tell you look the same you haven't changed and here is the case you are using all the yombo and the and the dye and they say not even one gray hair on your head they say <laughs> a day called now is coming it will not be the same so here is the man now his eyes were dim he couldn't see verse number 16 and the man said unto eli i am come out of the army and i fled today out of the army and he said what is there done my son what is happening on the battlefield the man said unto him the messenger israel is fled before the philistines and there has been also a great slaughter among the people and thy two sons also hophni and phinehas they are dead and the ark is taken your two sons they are dead and the ark is taken but you know what pearl i told you eli was not a bad man it's his children that were bad as for eli himself he didn't have a problem but he failed to groom his own children well his children were thieves there were people that stole from the cooking pot of the altar. The ark is taken. Your two sons are dead. But look at a godly man in verse 18. And it came to pass. When he mentioned, when he made mention of the ark of God, that he fell off from his seat backwards by the side of the gate, and his neck break and he died for he was not an old man and heavy and he had judged israel 40 years now what i'm about to tell you is what made the old man fall was not the death of his two sons but the fact that the ark was taken i'm here to announce to somebody right now that the ark called the church the ark called the kingdom of god is being taken by philistines unbelievers are hijacking the church unbelievers are hijacking the kingdom of god most of our churches have been seized by unbelievers unbelievers have come into these churches oh they've hijacked the marriage institution unbelievers have hijacked the marriage institution they've hijacked even the ministry unbelievers are preaching behind the pulpit in the name of their christians they know how to take the oil they know how to apply the oil they know that the members like a mantle they know that the members want a handkerchief they know that if only you can give them oil
real. They know that if you can tell them the Lord said, they know that if you can tell them you've seen a vision, they'll be hypnotized and they'll be wowed. And they will just follow you. So the art has been learned. And I can announce to you, the ark of the covenant has been taken. But today we want to pray that the sons of Sceva will not hijack the ark. And the Philistines will not hijack the ark. When we have the sons of Sceva and we have the sons of Eli in the kingdom, the sons of Eli will die. And the other thing too is this, that the ark will be captured. Now, there was a man also in the Bible. His name was called Samuel. And this Samuel was also a good man. I mean, Samuel was the prophet par excellence, where the Bible said that no word that came out of the mouth of Samuel fell to the ground. First Samuel 8 from verse 1. First Samuel 8 from verse 1. It came to pass when Samuel was old, that he made his sons judges over Israel. We don't know whether it's God who told him to do it or he himself. Because there are times when as a man of God, you get to a place where you think that you know God, but it's all familiarity. And you begin to do things God didn't even tell you to do. So he made his sons judges in Israel. And the name of his firstborn was Joel. And the name of his secondborn was Abia. And they were judges in Beersheba. And his sons walked not in his ways, but turned aside after Luca, and they took bribes and perverted judgment. Then all the elders of the children of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel unto Ramah. And they said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in your ways. Now make us kings to judge us like the other nations and you know they finally distorted everybody say distorted now they distorted the order of the kingdom and then they started making kings like the kings of the other nations what finally happened was that the kingdom of israel lost that theocracy and god ruling over them and they fell into the hands of human rulers and these human rulers exploited them until the kingdom of Israel was divided in two. In the days of King Rehoboam. And from that day, they have never had rest, even up till today. Now, prophetically, I want to put something on record. Sons of Sceva, sons of Eli, and sons of Samuel. These are sons that could not continue the legacy of their fathers. They couldn't continue the legacy of their fathers. I want you to watch your father well and see. Do I have what it takes to walk in the footsteps of this man or this woman? Our fathers may not even be the people you are seeing today. No. Today I prayed for myself. I said, Lord, I don't want to be a son of Sceva. And I don't want to be a son of Eli. And I don't want to be a son of Samuel. Our fathers. Oh. Yesterday I was talking to mommy. I said, I pity people who are very big titles. And one of the titles I fear most is apostle. Apostle. Miss Rose, I titled the change here. Apostle. Listen, from the time I was in school, in, in tech, 1981 onwards. The then they used to call me as apostle. I grew up in life, came into ministry, I ran away from that title. It was a nickname, not a title. I feared. it. I was telling mommy, I said, Pearl, the day we get to heaven, apostle Peter will be there. And apostle Paul will be standing there. And you too, apostle Lord, and let's go look. When we say in Crawford, yeah, dear, almost for titles are almost like a grand tears here. Now, so I got Tamubi. And 
And when they ask you, why are you an apostle? I've opened a church. Are you sure it's a church you opened or a job bar? If I were you and I'm not backsliding, I'll be clapping. Sometimes you see someone and the titles are longer than his own name. No, the title is half the page. Our fathers, Paul, Peter, Timothy, Jude, James, they left us a legacy. Is any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church and let them come and pray over him, anointing him with oil. So they sanctioned anointing with oil. But they sanctioned it because they themselves were sanctified. And today, there are unsanctified people that are carrying the sanctioned oil. <laughs> Sons of Skiva. They pounced on them. Eli's sons, they didn't walk in the ways of their father. They died. Their father fell when the ark was captured and broke his neck. Samuel, the kingdom was taken from him. And today, you know what is happening in the kingdom? Because there are many people that have gone into what God has not called them. I want to talk about three things. Defilement, deformation, and destruction. Defilement. When I look at the sons of Skiva being beaten up, wounded, bruised, and they are running out naked, I see three things. I see defilement. Nakedness, huh? I see defilement. I see deformation. And I see destruction. What do I mean by defilement? You know what? If God has not called you into the deliverance ministry and has not called you into ministration and you do it by force, very soon you'll be defiled. I know years ago, there was a lady who came into ministry. She came into the ministry and she wanted deliverance. She wanted to be delivered of all kinds of demons. I, I took part in that deliverance. It was a very serious one. It was outside the country. Very, very serious act of deliverance. No, when you start laying, when you lay hands on the girl, she starts behaving like a snake. And because she was coming from the world, even her dressing was very suggestive. In fact, this, suggest, this dressing was not just suggestive. This dressing was um, not suggestive. It was um, entrapping. Because when you lay hands on her, you have, you have to take your eyes away. Especially if you're a normal man. You know there are men who have no normal nomenclature. So you lay us on, in the name of Jesus, come out. And you have to be looking at me. Finally, we said one of the brothers should follow up the girl. We thought he was a, he was a hot one. He came to me and said, Apostle. I said, what is it? He said, I need you. I said, and then, I said, Charlie, the girl has finished me. I said, are you the one who finished her? She has finished you. He said, no, that girl has finished me. Or see, that girl is something else. Or see, now, I can't even concentrate. You know what happened? He finally married her. And you know what happened? The marriage broke. You know what happened? He lost the ministry. I have not heard of him for many years. People are going, listen, these are sons of Skiva who are trying to cast out devils and they don't have what it takes to deal with the devils. The one they are supposed to deliver, they end up sleeping with the person. Defilement in the kingdom of God. You come into our churches and the defilement is in the choir, the, de the defilement is in the ushering, the de defilement is in the church. Sometimes in the pulpit. In the pulpit. Somebody raped a woman of God. Not a woman of God. Raped a woman. Raped a woman. Another person was giving me recommendation for somebody to get involved with my ministry. 
and said, Pastor Eastwood, you know, I'm giving me, give me a recommendation. There is man of God I know, and I want to recommend the person highly. The person's ministry is very strong. And I think you should get involved with him. You'll be very happy to meet this person. This person is a very genuine man of God. I want you to meet him. I said, what's the name? She mentioned the name. I said, I'll talk to you later. I said, Pearl, the man who just raped a woman, and we heard about it, somebody is introducing him as a very powerful minister who I must open up to. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to advise you sometimes you are in a church where your pastor is a very simple pastor with 30 members, 20 members, 10 members, and every Sunday you go to church and everything is normal. Sit there, call them quietly. Stop running after things. Otherwise, one of these days, you are going to fall into the hands of the sons of Skiva. So you know what, ladies and gentlemen, I can tell you this one we call church today is not what we inherited from the fathers. This is not what Peter gave us. This is not what John gave us. This is not what Thomas gave us. This is not what James gave us. But I thank God, Maya Kasaya. When I was driving to church today, I said, Lord, what is the theme for November? What is our theme for November? Lord, I'm waiting for the theme for November. It has not arrived yet. The Lord said, Mercy. The Lord said, Mercy. The Lord said, Mercy. The Lord said, Mercy. November, that is from tomorrow. After tomorrow is the month of mercy. In wrath, oh God, remember mercy. Come on, somebody scream. But you know, mommy will say, You heard that thing in the car. I was sitting with you in the car. We were conversing throughout until we got to the church. When did you hear that thing? I have two ears one for my wife, one for the Holy Ghost. No, no, no. Let me caution you. Especially those of you who converse with me more than five minutes. After five minutes, any other thing you are saying, you are wasting your time. Minutes are time, no. You were, you were born for mortals. Some of us are born to hear another voice. Because you, your voice is full of lies. Even when you are telling me something, you are not telling me the whole thing. So when you start the story, I can predict where it is going. After five minutes, I stop listening and I do something called extrapolation. Extrapolation is when you do a graph up to a certain point and you continue the rest by imagination. And that, and, and that kind of imagination is normally correct. So we are sitting there. Daddy, I'm listening. And there are many pastors who are and many ministers and prayer warriors and co who have defiled their marriage bells beds. The Bible said that marriage is honorable in all and the bed is undefiled. I remember one day a woman said, I'm bringing my children to come and greet you. I said, Bring them. She brought three children in front of me. The Lord told me the middle one is not the, the husband's child. And this woman was married to a pastor. Up till today, Minkai, Omukase Minim. Oh, nim nyo ye mami. Ha, mi nim. Inti ene time mi hu, mi hu mi say, eh, adiwe. Well, some of the things may never be known throughout their lives. But I pray, may the Lord take defilement out of the church. You know what people, the demons beating up the sons of Skiva and destroying them and they running naked is like our case. Where's the defilement? The shame? People don't want to go to church because the unbelievers look at us and we are the same as they are. Listen, until we establish the ground and the foundation of righteousness, purity, the church is not the church. And I pray, may 
the Lord bring us to the place of holiness. And, and you know, people, when we are doing all this ministration and there's no holiness, we open up to the devil destroying us. So many people now, defilement, and the defilement leads to deformation. Now, what I want to talk about deformation, what I want to talk about deformation. I'm talking about Samuel, who is a prophet. And he takes his own children and makes them judges when God had not called them to be judges. God is not in it. They tempted the people and the people came and said, we want to make kings like the kings of the other nations. You know, people, the anointing and the real power of God is missing in the church. And then because the sons of Skiva, you and I, when I talk about the sons of Skiva, I'm not talking about anybody else but you and I, including me. And any apostle and prophet and pastor who will be humble enough to say, Lord, we don't measure up to the standard of our fathers. Therefore, we are the sons of Skiva. We are using the oil, but we don't have the God of the oil. We are using the mantle, but the Spirit of God upon us to use that mantle. We don't have it. We are building the churches. The churches are big. They are gorgeous. They are flamboyant with all the with all the with all the beautiful screens. Look at the screen, charisma. Look at look at how nice it is. Look at look at the things we are displaying on the screen. Beautiful. But the glory of God may be missing. Ikabod may have taken place. This is a generation with nice things, but without the beauty of the glory of God. We have taken a holy tradition that was handed over to us by the fathers, and we have changed it into something else. And because we changed it into something else, the power of God left the church. And you know what? Anytime the real thing, anytime the truth, anything the real power, anytime the real glory leaves, people go into deformity. They start looking for artificial things to cover themselves. So here is a man, Adam. Here is a woman, Eve. The glory of God has left them. They can see their nakedness like the sons of Skiva. And they made leaves and covered themselves. Deformity. So look at us. When the true glory left and the real power left, then we look for artificial things. Let's get something else. Let's get something else and cover our nakedness. We are like the sons of Skiva. The demons have beaten us up. But we will not repent. We want something that will have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof. So, we don't have the power but let's look for some clothing and wear them so that we'll look like the high priest of the Old Testament. So, these days, every pastor is looking for dress. We are looking for some kind of cassocks or some, some kind of dresses and, and, and sometimes when we wear them they don't even fit us. We, we, we stand there, sometimes we look like Santa Claus. I, am I talking to somebody at all? There's, there's deformity. And, and we have all these titles. And here is the apostle. And here is the bishop. And here is the doctor. And here is the this. And here is the that. So today, if you close your eyes, Sandalamosi, Kiblando, Liski, Miniakabata, Ikrodobo, Siata, just get up the following day and say, I'm a prophet. And everybody will believe it. Say, I'm a teacher. And everybody will believe it. Say, I'm a pastor. And everybody will believe it. Nevertheless, the foundation of God stands sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every man that names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. May the Lord anoint you to know the difference between the truth and the false. I heard the Messiah say, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me there is a deformity, there is a distortion, a deformity, a distortion, a deformity, a distortion. Distortion, a deformity, a distortion, distortion, deformity. The word of God, the incorruptible word of God, that pure.
pure word of God. That word of God that is so pure. The Bible calls it silver and the Bible compares with it gold. Oh, this word has been exchanged for, for, for fables. Old women's stories. People tell all kinds of stories and sometimes you listen to a doctrine that is coming from the pulpit and you are so confused. You don't know what this whole thing is about. But I tell you people, we are in the days of the sons of Sceva. Ministry has become employment. If you don't have anything to do, look for ministry. That is the way it is like. But I'm praying for the church. I'm praying for the kingdom of God. I'm praying for myself. I'm praying for desert pastors. I'm praying for founding a chapel. I'm praying for EAM. I'm praying for the body of Christ. I'm praying for you. I don't know about you. But today, I came to church to repent. I came to church to see God. I came to church like the sons of Sceva. I am not pointing my finger at somebody as a child of Sceva. I'm looking at myself and I'm saying, Lord, if I'm a son of Sceva, I am a daughter of Sceva. Have mercy on me. Deformity. 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 How many of our churches will remain without a signboard? Is that deformity? We depend on the signboard more than on the Holy Ghost. <laughs> How many of our churches will remain without marketing and without publicity? The churches will die. It is the spirit that quickens. The flesh profits nothing. And the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. There is serious deformity. Do you know who, you are, who I am? Do you know who I am? I know. You are nothing. You are nothing. You are nothing. There is only one who is everything. And that is the one on the throne. And since you are not on the throne, I declare to you, you are nothing. Defilement. Defilement. The money which belongs to God is no longer for God. It belongs to man. It belongs to women. That's part of the defilement. Oh. Deformation. The church has been deformed. The church is distorted deformed it has lost its shape this is not what it used to be there's destruction Eli fell and broke his neck oh people we are dying we are dying they are burying us young our necks are breaking. The ark is captured. There are funerals everywhere. Can we do this? Can we stop attending the funerals and rather pray that people should not die? Yes, Why is a backslidden church attending more funerals than they are attending prayer meetings? You go to funerals to weep with the, with the dead, to mourn for the dead. You go to funerals to mourn for the dead. But you come to the prayer meeting to stop the people from dying. And that is why we are here this week. That is why we are here today. That is why we'll be here tomorrow. That is why we'll be here on Wednesday and Thursday and Friday. And if you agree with me, come on, scream like your voice is yours and press. Distraction. And the Bible said, if the foundations 
be destroyed what shall the righteous do Oh, 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 yeah. Listen. Go to Turkey. Go to Turkey. Go to Turkey. Modern day Turkey. When Jesus wrote the letters to the seven churches of Asia Minor, all the seven are in Turkey. Smyrna, Sardis, Pergamos, Ephesus, Philadelphia, Laodicea. All the seven. Thyatira. All those churches are in Turkey. But go there today. We went to Turkey. We saw all them churches. Ruins. So one day, if you are not careful, you see this church, they call it the Great Desert Passes. People come here in, and to be ruins. Stone upon stone. In Turkey, earthquakes brought many of them down. And some of them were not destroyed by earthquakes. Invaders invaded the churches and broke them down and burned them down with fire. The time is coming. You see all these beautiful cathedrals and beautiful things we are building. All these beautiful church buildings we are doing. If you are not careful, one day you will wake up. And when we have compromised all the standards of Almighty God, all these things we are building will not exist. I pray. Oh, Jesus. Kadabasi and Haka. Take us back to the foundation. Our generation is like the sons of Skiva. Watch me. We borrowed this. We took this legacy. We inherited this legacy from a man called Peter. Peter, the one who said, silver and gold, have I none? But such as I have, give up thee. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. How many cripples are we raising? We, re we inherited this legacy from a man called Peter who stood in a boat and the boat was going to have shipwreck and he said my name is Paul the angel of the Lord whose I am and whom I serve stood by me last night and said that nobody will lose their life just listen to me forget about the captain forget about the owner of the boat listen to me I am your pastor I am your savior on this boat Paul the apostle and we got this legacy we've destroyed it we are preaching in the name of Jesus and in the name of Paul we are preaching in the name of Jesus whom Paul preached but we don't know him. The sons of Sceva were the sons of a man who was a chief priest among the people of Israel. So he was a man of sacerdotal order. But here you have his sons. They don't know the ways of God. Father, tonight, if I am not like Peter, I am not like Paul. I bring defilement to the church. I bring deformation to the church. And I bring destruction to the church. Father, the ark of the covenant has been captured. We cry unto you. Bring back the foundations that are broken. Let us be true. I didn't come to condemn the office of the apostle and the prophet and the pastor and the teacher and the evangelist but I'm saying that if you say you are one make sure God called you into that office I am not even saying don't wear your bishopric regalia if you deserve it and it fits you wear it I'm not wearing it because I don't deserve it and number two I don't think it will fit me. When I look at this free, it will fit me. The way I'm here, I might say, me shout the enemy the belt in the bomb one. 
Me, any Auntie Maggie, there will be no difference. In the dimension, because I'm fat. So I'm not even talking against the dresses. I came to tell somebody, you know what? Let's go back to where it all started. The ground of truth, holiness, righteousness, purity. The place of fire. Lord, bring back the days of Peter and Paul and James and John. Lift up those hands. Pray like you want fire on you. Come on, pray. Oh, my God. 
Lord, even if I can be like Lester Samuel, just like Lester Samuel, he didn't live in the Bible days, but he was alive just recently. At least I saw him with my eyes. Just Lester, Apostle, those men were different. Lester Samuel went to Manila, Philippines. There was a demoniac. No man could tame that demoniac. This guy was in chains. Wild! They called Lester Samuel. He said, I can deal with it. Wild madman. They call it the, 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 the something something of Manila. He went there, cast out this demon from the man. The whole of the tabloids took it. Everywhere. This is a man who is lying in a room. Satan entered the room and moved his bed from this corner to that corner. By the time he woke up, his bed was lying there. Satan flew out through the window. He opened the window. He said, Devil, come back. And the devil returned. He said, My bed was not here, it was here. Put it back. And the bed shifted and went back to his position. Listen. Those were the men. They are getting missing. I told mommy yesterday, I said, Pearl, I wish I could stop traveling. I don't like being home either because you people sometimes can be very boring. So I don't like you either. Because you and the people that travel to you are the same. I'm sure you are shocked I said I, didn't li I don't like you. I love you but I don't like you. I don't like you. I love you. I love you in spite of all your funny ways. But I don't like you because you don't kick the fire in me. There is something about you that quenches the fire. I told mommy, I said, Pearl, it's becoming very difficult to preach. Very, very difficult. I'm telling you, difficult. Huh? Pastor Jeffy, it's, it's becoming difficult to preach. Because you are holding the thing and you are wondering, can they receive it? He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. We are in a generation, oh Jesus, lift up your hand. Eric, come here with your wife. You know, Eric, several years ago I felt sick, like the way you are sick sometimes. I thought I was going to die. The Lord told me, I called you and I gave you a different message. 
And he said, your message is different from the ones I gave your friends. He told me point blank, he said, if you don't preach what I want you to preach, you will die. He said, I will take you away. I begged him, I was in London. I said, Lord, I beg you, I will preach. My messages are not very popular. No, you can listen to me and hate me with a passion. I quite cry then, I say, me, it's a Peter Why? Any poor. May you no cry, Lester Samro. As for Lester, I knew him. And I also saw R.W. Shamba. And if you are Ghanaian, don't look too far. You heard of a man called Santasia Mwaku. I pity those of you who want to be like us. When you see us, you, 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 you just want to be like us. And the thing you want to be like us is what we wear. What we drive, what we eat, our necklaces, our bracelets, our wristwatches, the way we travel from aeroplane to aeroplane. That's what you want to be. Our beautiful churches with all the screens. You see a pastor who hasn't got a church building, but he has a screen in a classroom. And, 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 Every Sunday, they carry the classroom like Dagon. They, they carry the screen like Dagon, put it in the classroom, and after the meeting, they carry it back. It has become an idol. Any child who is running around the screen, hey, Musonumu! Munim the cost, Munim the cost of this screen. 100,000, why? Oh, you want to be like us. But the standard may be wrong. Maybe just look beyond me. Look beyond me. You may see better examples of integrity and honor and power and raw desire for God. Am I preaching to somebody at all? Am I? Am I? I don't have a guest speaker this week. I'm the only person speaking. Assisted by these able pastors, like Pastor John Walker. By the way, your dress is very nice. You can be like him. That dress is nice. You can be like that. Eric, you are not going anywhere. You have your assignment on earth. Fulfill it. Tomorrow, when you go to the school, don't do it during classes. You and your wife. What does what do you do? Hannah. Is the name Hannah? Yeah, seems sense. Tomorrow, look for one hour. Join your husband in the school. They should go. Go and sit at the new building they are building. Find two chairs. Our I saw the foundation. Our eyes will see the finish. We will function in this building. And we will have fun in the building. What class do you teach? Class 6. So will this class be in the new building or the old one? Old. But it will still be in your school.
Hannah, you guys are going nowhere. By the agreement of these things. In the name of Jesus. Let the spirit of life. Be upon you. Take it. May pure oil. Man of God, come to me. Come. May God grant you pure oil. Oh, Jesus. Take it. Oh, let it go. Jesus. I hear the Lord say to me to tell the pastors of Fountain Gate Chapel and the pastors in this region and any pastor in this building you are going back home with pure oil in your hand. Pure oil. There is too much oil which is not pure. I pray. Receive pure oil. Come on, take it. Receive it. In the next 37 seconds, I must lay hands on seven people. I saw myself laying hands on seven people. And the seven multiplied to 14. And the Lord said that these are the people that will be the double investment in the kingdom of God. Lift up your hand and receive it in the name of Jesus. Come on, take it. Some of you will sense that something is happening to you. You can sense that your oil is beginning to burn afresh. Come on, receive it. Ah, Jesus. Especially if you are a pastor. Especially if you are a man of God. Don't care about anybody. Don't look at anybody. Don't worry about anybody on your side. Come on, take it right now. Oh, Jesus. 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 Now, 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 now. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Look at me one second. Look at me one second. I hear something. I, I hear something in my spirit that the witness, the witness is speaking. 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 And as I'm saying, God is giving people pure oil. Somebody can feel that witness in your spirit. That the witness is ministering to you right now. And that witness is the witness of the Holy Ghost. That the Holy Ghost is ministering to your spirit man. That something different is taking place in you. Online, in person, anywhere you are. YouTube, X, Instagram, everywhere. I speak television. Everywhere I pray now. Spirit of the living God. Right now, right now, right now. Bring her to me. And anybody who is receiving that witness. You are a pastor. That witness is coming up in you. And some of the people with the witness, they can see themselves at the altar. They can see themselves standing somewhere. They can sense it. They know it. It's a witness.
Mother Livingston, Pastor Livingston. Wamiya, 
Samuel was old that he made what are you making in your old age now that you are old what are you making what you are making is likely to be a mistake I went to Amsterdam I told mommy I said Pearl, tell the people who are looking after, looking after me Nobody should come to my hotel room until after 1 p.m. I want to be alone. I want to hear and hear clearly. He made the sons judges over Israel. Now, the firstborn was Joel, and the name of the second was Abia, and they were judges in back. Bathsheba. And his sons walked not in the ways, in his ways, but they turned aside after filthy lucre. And they took bribes and perverted judgment. Then all the Israel people came and they said, Your sons are not walking in your ways. Look at the sons of Eli. The sons of Eli. Same situation. Eli was 90 and 80 years old. But I wish I could get the story about how Eli's sons took the meat. They took the flesh hook and they took the meat. Find that one for me. The Bible said, and the sons of Eli, they did not know the Lord. They knew not the Lord. They knew not the Lord. Is it possible somebody can be a pastor, but he doesn't know the Lord? It's true. There are many pastors, if you do an altar call, they will respond. Now, the sons of Eli were sons of Belial. They knew not the Lord. They knew not the Lord. Lift up your hand and pray. Father, remove the defilement. Remove the deformation. And remove the distraction. We repent in the name of Jesus. Makatolo Oh Jesus. Now, listen to me. I want you to pray this prayer. I want you to pray this prayer. Lift up your hand and look at me. I want you to say, Lord Jesus. Any pattern, sequence, series, any pattern, sequence series of death that have been planned I remove myself from the batch I remove myself from the sequence I remove myself from the series I remove myself from the list you know what is happening somebody is dead and you are supposed to be the next listen there is no year when I have seen strange things like this here, somebody will die and within the same family, somebody the following week. Some followed each other day after. Some died a month after. And that's because you know what? When one person dies, everybody assumes that nothing will happen in this family again. I declare today any plan or scheme of the enemy that took out somebody and you are the next that I 
arrangement is cancelled. Somebody cancel the arrangement. Cancel the arrangement. Oh, me jifu kesi. Eni u ye ho. Eti unkwana mi tri. Kasi ye ye. If you say, Oh, your dog, be a petty do me free my commemorate any matina me die. That is why every birthday of mine I'm not able to celebrate. Because I look at myself and when I calibrate it, I'm far away. I'm like, Lord, I'm not ready. Because you know, When you stand in front of him with all this huge title you have, the Reverend Eastwood Adapa, and you stand there <laughs> and you have joined the galaxy of stars, you are shining like the brightness of the feminine. That is the way we are supposed to be. I keep telling people the most awesome day in your life will be the day your eyes close like this never to open on the earth again never to open on the earth again never to open on the earth again your eyes are closed and you will not see the earth the way it is again then I ask a question so what will you see For all men, bishops and popes and pastors and reverends, that day is coming. Oh! I wish I was not a pastor. And I just preach like this. 
but on Sunday I don't come here as your pastor but I come here like a member come and sit in the church as of the end hame hame so if you hear drumstick you hear drumstick invoice near 7,000 hey ready and then morning am I I had this I am sure a good mission and they're ready nipper new on between my side you may let me tell you a kakra hey ready are they are they and go for you only say on our friend and a fry of frame, you know, not drumstick in camp. And the common drumstick, almost to me, you know, you know, just let me say, Jimmy, be a ever genuine drumstick. Oh, a bra convention ever. I also say, I'm in the park, where ready now, go preach. Yeah, the drumstick, a shimmy trim. One week to the program. A ready, we'll be three or more. Why you see many of these pastors who are walking about and they are not anointed? It is because of the things we put on their head. I pray. Oh Jesus, Father. Make the desert pastors a different kind of a church. Make us a center of revival. Somebody pray for revival in the desert pastures. If it happens, it will touch you wherever you are. Pray. touch our lives that your name be glorified in Jesus mighty name Amen everybody stand up but don't sit lift up this right hand and declare heavenly father I pray that my hand will be a blessing to the kingdom of God make me a blessing but not a curse in Jesus name Amen. Now, listen to me. Listen to me. Sometimes when we minister and we receive an offering or a seed, it is not like we just want to do it. No. Every seed that is received in the house of God is a proof of where your heart is. For example, nobody has to told me to sow a seed of a thousand before I do it. I just know that the quality of this ministry and what God is doing in this house, if I sit here and I give a seed of a thousand, I haven't done anything too big. I want somebody to walk to me here now. And I want you to sow that seed of a thousand. And when you sow the seed of the thousand right on that envelope revival, somebody who is praying and saying that, Lord, 
I want revival from the desert pastures to reach the whole world. I want to sow a seed of a thousand into desert pastures so that revival will reach the whole world. Mind you, when you sow it, you are sowing into this microphone, you are sowing into the camera, you are sowing into the screens, you are sowing into the YouTube and the X and the Instagram and every means by which you are listening to me today. And if you are watching us online and you are sowing that seed, put your name on the screen in front of me. In the morning, what a joy it was when some people who were even watching us online put their names there. Now watch me, watch me, listen to me. Anybody who is standing here and you are a pastor of a church or a pastor, yeah, you are the pastor of a church or you are the owner of a business, I want you to have that boldness to walk to me here and take that envelope and sow that seed and declare my business and my ministry from today I tied up to the revival of God emanating from the desert pastures and the Lord will be with you come to me here quickly every pastor every business person somebody wants to do it talk to Pastor Solo help him for me every pastor every businessman Sometimes what you need to do is to hear an instruction and obey it. Every pastor, every businesswoman. Hey, I can see Dr. Sarah to AJ is in the house. This woman of God. When you finish, just sit by where mommy is. You can take my chair. I don't mind. You're my sister. You can take my chair. Or you can sit by mommy. Pearl, show Doc where to sit. And somebody bring, in case she's, she brought a bag Oh, so you came with this lady, okay. Did you come with her? Did you come with Doc? Okay, I thought you came with her. Thank you. Listen to me, people. Stand to your feet. And as you are standing, I'm waiting for five more people to come to me. I feel in my spirit, five more people should come to me and do this seed right now. Five more people come to me and do it. Some of them are online. They should go ahead and do it. And the Lord bless your life. Lift up your hand and talk to God. Lift up your hand and talk to God. I feel in my spirit five more people coming to me here quickly. Five more people coming to me. Hey, what are you looking for here? Where's your wife? Amazing. How long are you staying? Three days. This is one of the pharmacists who also ran away. Thank you, sir. He will be speaking to us and greeting us along the line. Welcome, sir. Came all the way from Accra. Oh, glory. How many of you truly love this ministry? This ministry, I believe, is a special ministry from a very unusual part of the world. Sending revival throughout the nations of the world. And somebody here tonight can sow a seed of 300 Ghana cities. Can you come to me here quickly? Come to me here quickly. Between tonight and tomorrow, go ahead and do it. Pastor Aaron, thank you. Listen to me. If I'm you, I'm in a pastor, I will do this. When you do this, you condemn poverty to the face. You tell poverty you can't stop me. Thank you, my daughter. Glory. Josh, thank you. Hey, Raymond. <laughs> this is my law. Josh, hmm. you have to back up because Raymond now is taking the thing to another level. So, Jackson, you have to try. You know, we are able to do what we do because of you. I want to call the last seed. Between tonight and tomorrow, can somebody do 100? Come to me and do it. 
Pastor Mike, help me with some of the envelopes. I want to see any God lover. Pastor Mike, pick this from me and do it. I want to see any God lover. Not a business person. Not a pastor. But a God lover. Pastor Solo, take this and do it for me. Any God lover. I love God. I love revival. I'm so glad that the power of God is moving from this house. Give it to Pastor Mike. I want to see the revival spread. Somebody come on down here quickly. Alice, how are you? Come here. Let me pray over you. Let me bless your life. Father, bless the life of your daughter. I pray. Touch her. Receive it. Father, we give you praise and glory. Some of you made some pledges in the morning. I want you to take that pledge and put it on the altar. If you did a pledge in the morning, some of you it was a thousand, some of you it was 100. Put it on the altar. And those of you that took the envelope right now, and you are doing the thousand, you are doing the hundred, come and put it on the altar. Somebody give me an envelope. Yesterday, you saw that I stood here and I picked up some five envelopes and I said some people to sow a certain seed. And that seed was 5,000. And Gabriel, you know, yesterday something happened. You were not here. I joined the rain assembly and the fire assembly. And then when I received the offering, I realized that if you were watching the service from anywhere, you say your rain assembly, the offering. Hasn't come. So I got four people to sow a seed of 5,000 each. I did 5,000. Mommy did 5,000. And some other two people did 5,000. I've just received, I'm just receiving the last 5,000. So that makes it um, four of us sowing that seed of 5,000. And I want um, a basket here that 5,000 can go in. That 5,000 can go into this basket. Because it's, it's, it will not be added to today's offering. It's an offering for Sunday. Okay. So they will treat it different. Okay. Hey, I like the way this young man is walking. Everybody, come and pick up your offering and come and put it on the altar. Now, wait a minute. Any of you that picked up an envelope, put it on the altar. Those of you that are bringing it tomorrow, may the Lord touch your heart. And may the Lord give you the capacity to sow your seed. And I want everybody to stand on your feet. We are going to dance and bring every offering. We call this one the normal offering. The other one was the abnormal offering. We are bringing the normal offering in the name of Jesus. The normal offering. The normal one. The one which even if you are asleep, you will give it. The 10 and the 20 and the 5 and the 1 and the 2. Stand to your feet. Come on, sit. Stand, stand, stand. And let them bring us from the back. Kaoguamano, Mumma Yesu di Nasu, Wedi Kulim, Oh, Christo Asafono, Mumbo Semani, Enyo Nyam, Enyo. And you are
Amen. You may be seated. Now, I want you to remember that tomorrow the meeting is starting at 5 a.m. How many of you are awake by 5 a.m.? 5 a.m., but that one is Zoom. Don't start coming here. 5 a.m. is Zoom, and we call it War. This is the last episode of War, and it's going to be on Zoom, and the meeting ID is 465-465. 0465 and the passcode is EAM CAPS. So tomorrow I'll be doing that one from the house and it is going to be from 5 to 7. Then I'll be back here at 9 and we're coming to pray and I'm going to teach. I started principalities today and I haven't finished the principalities. So tomorrow I will continue the principalities. I'll actually finish principalities tomorrow morning and then I will come back at the 9 o'clock and I will start talking about powers. And tomorrow night I will continue with the powers or the exousias. Okay? And then we will be going until we finish. We wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in hard places. You want to remind somebody that charisma has started and they must be part of it. And every day is three meetings Number one meeting is a Zoom. Number two is in person here in the morning. And then number three is in the night at 6 p.m. And we are going to be here. How many of you have been blessed by the first day? The first day you've been blessed. Sometimes when we do our events, after the first day you just tell yourself, even if this is the end, I think I've had more than enough. But I believe that it's going to get better and better and better. And God is going to bless our lives. Well, today um, we are so honored and blessed to have a very good friend of old time, old time, you know. So some of the some of the days are new time, some of the days are old time. And when the revival started here in Bogatanga, there was this woman of God who also got born again so much on fire. And they did a lot of work here with the women aglow. And I think she came to do something with women aglow, I'm not sure. She came to do something with them. And Mama Comfort was to tell last Sunday we didn't see Mama Comfort, that was yesterday. Little mommy told me that she had gone to speak and to be with the women aglow. But uh, we have here the Reverend Dr. Mrs. Um, Sarah to Eje. She's in the house. Let's welcome this woman of God and then let her come up and say hello to us. Come on, g- give it to her. Give it, give it up for her. Thank you. Godia. Thank you. Sanu <laughs> Kade. Somebody Praise say, the Lord. Somebody say we are blaspheming. We are speaking how is that? Also for any of us of Miami. Thank you very much for this opportunity. I am really one of you. I'm a foundational member. Ah. How many of you remember Nentam? And you were there. How many of you remember Broken Yoke? Aha, we are the foundational members. This church has done so much in my life. I think at another time, I'll come and share a testimony. But when I see what I see, I can't stop saying thank you to the Lord. It tells me he's faithful. Amen? So if you sit in here and you don't know what God's faithfulness is, just see what is happening around. 
So if your commitment is half-hearted, let what is happening here convert you. Amen? You see the heart your pastor has. I mean, he wishes he could just pour it into all of us and we'll all start running helter-skelter for the Lord. Amen? Just pray and tell God, let me be what he desires of me because that is what God desires of you. Amen? And it will be well with all of us and God's name will be glorified, especially this part of the nation. Amen? Let's get serious with God and let everybody around see God in us without even coming to church. <laughs> I will come and share my testimony at another time. And you will see the power of someone just seeing Christ in you and what it means. Amen. No. The Christianity is not just church going. It is you. Christ in you. So if I'm looking for Christ and I meet you, I will rest there. Because I've met love. I've met kindness. I've met goodness. Amen. Oh, that is the Christianity. It is not the church. Church is a classroom. We just came to school. When we say amen, all that the man of God said, let's start walking in it. Wherever you find yourselves, at your place of work, in your home, your neighborhood, wherever you find yourself, just start acting that way. And you will see what that means. Without us saying anything, people will just follow us to church. But you see how difficult it is to bring anybody along because we don't leave the word. Hmm? We don't. Everything was saying, I was standing at the back there and I was screaming, Pastor, you are right. Pastor, that is just what it is. The church has deviated. I know where God brought me from. And when I see what I see, my heart breaks. Sometimes I wish I could go back. But the fact is that Jesus is Lord. And so I cannot go back. But what is happening is, is, is such a sorry sight. The Bible hasn't changed. It's the same Bible. It's the same word of God. What has happened to the church today? Eh? So why do we come to church? If you are not prepared for the word of God to change you, stay home. Amen. I always say we don't pay wages. For you to say if I miss church, I will miss my wage. So why do we, we come? Because we want to be like him. You know, he made a statement when I was standing there. He's looking for a day, and I've always said that many times. That we will come not because of what we will get, but what we want to be. <laughs> Amen. What do you want to be? He said, greater things will you do now that I go to the Father. Great in me, I can't Amen. Eh? So sometimes I wonder who we are following. No, honestly, it's awful. I'm confused. I don't know. And the Bible is true. It's simply because we don't come to church to be what God wants us to be. We come with our own agenda and it won't work. Tell someone sitting next to you it won't work. So for me that's it. <laughs>
So tell us a lot about this um, desert and um, wind with Pastor Eastwood and what we should do with it. You know, some hackers hijacked our EAM or Eastwood and our ministries um, page. And we are, I think we've got it back, but it has a strange name. And because of the name, we are waiting for Facebook to remove that name before we bring the thing back. Meanwhile, we are on some other things, okay? And the Instagram too is all working well. And they said I was, we were on TikTok. I said, yeah. Because TikTok, yeah. Oh, yeah, so for to me, man, now I can come. All right, Pastor William. Thank you so much, Danny. Let's put our hands together for our Father for such an anointed message and ministration. Hallelujah. Thank you also for coming and for joining online. So I will talk about Desert Wind with Pastor Eastwood. So um, we are a lot of people in person and a lot of people who joined online on our various platforms. And we will encourage you to go to Facebook. There's a page, Desert Wind with Pastor Eastwood. So you click like on the page. If you have a phone and you have credit on it, can you go to Facebook now? Facebook. If your phone is as credit and it's also no Pona or Larvaco, just go there now, just go there now, just go there now, just go there now. If you go there, I will see it because the numbers will change on my phone. So if you do me a lewa na kamaku, and then as soon as you go there, just type I am there. Just type I am there. If you go there, just type I am here. I am here. I am here. Jack, where are you? When we were children, we used to say, Jank, what are you? I am here. Jank, what are you? When I grew up, I knew the thing was not Jank, what are you? It was Jack. Where are you? So let me look for Dr. James Azanlerugu, whether he's on. So everybody go there, go there, go there, go there. Desert wind with Pastor Eastwood. I can see the people online are already saying I'm here. I can see Pastor Solo Abuaji, Leticia Wood. Okay. They are in the building. Abba Fame, okay. Edward Awunimi, okay. John Anaba, okay. So he's working. No, as for John, he, did, he just said he's watching. He didn't type, I am here. Type, I am here. Type, I am here. And then they should like it, eh? Yes, they daddy. Should like, it. like it. They should like They should click on like. So click on like. Because this account is um, the administrative account. That's why we are not seeing it. But on your phone, you will see like page there. Oh, so okay. So it's because it's mine, that's why I'm not yes, seeing it. Yes, you are an administrator okay. on the page. That's I'm why. an administrator. Yes. Tell them my post. I'm a what? <laughs> <laughs> Tell them. <laughs> I'm an administrator. <laughs> Meanwhile, when they are hacking me, who she? If it's me alone, Metra now on my hacking area, I swam me phone no crack and me who Okay, so did mommy like it? Wow, okay. So everybody, come on. Just do something. Okay. But at least I can see the numbers change. Yes, daddy. Okay, let me look at if the numbers are changing. If the numbers are changing. Okay, the numbers are changing. They are, they are really climbing up. The numbers are really climbing up. I am here, I'm here. Wow, well done, well done. Rebecca and senior, well done. Jessica. Well done. 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 So keep doing it. So Pastor William will keep talking. And you open there and keep doing it. And I'll keep looking if the numbers are climbing up. If the numbers start going down, I'll come back. Yes, Daddy. So Daddy, the, the, it's on the screen for you to see. Oh, so I can see from here. Yes, Daddy. BBC. Born before computer. So okay. Please. okay, now I can see. Thank you. So anytime we go live, if you follow the page... You are going to get a notification. So for now, it's our main Facebook page we are operating from. So kindly like it and follow it. All information coming from the page is legitimate and is correct. Um, we would also like to say that we have our EAM, EAM app on the Play Store of Android devices and the App Store for Apple devices. So please kindly go on the Play Store and the App Store and download the app. You know, we have our live stream there to join us live. So you can also join us 
live via the app. So please download the app. We have a lot of information, our updates, our upcoming events. We put all of it there. If you want to um, connect with you, it's a way, it belongs to us. So um, we will communicate a lot with you there. So kindly download the app. And also note that um, Pastor Isu does not solicit for funds uh, on social media via your personal um, profiles. So if you receive a message in your inbox on WhatsApp, on Instagram, on Facebook, on X, on TikTok that um, I'm Pastor Eastwood, I want to pray with you, it's not true. There's nobody in the ministry who will send you a private message asking you to do anything that um, is related with finances in your private inbox. It does not happen in the ministry. So anybody who does that, please don't do it. Anytime we have a service, um, we receive offering from the front here as was done today, but not via your personal inboxes. So please don't, don't join any group or anybody, don't listen to anybody who claims they are with the ministry and they are asking you for money. It is not true. Hallelujah. Thank you very much, Daddy. God bless you. And um, there is this one which will tell you we have an orphanage in Nigeria. And, um, <laughs> you know, so people call me, they are like, so do you really have an orphanage in Nigeria? The only orphanage I have is in my house. I'm an orphan. My father died many years ago. My mother too died many years ago. Mommy too, her father and mother have passed. So both of us, we form an orphanage. So um, that is the only orphanage we have. Me and mommy are the only orphans <laughs> in that house. It's the only orphanage we have. And that orphanage, we have enough food to eat, so uh, you don't have any problem. So the Lord mightily bless you, and we are coming back tomorrow, and we love you. Thank you. The day number one has been very powerful. Tomorrow, yeah, you can clap your, you can clap your hands. And we want to thank you, because this one, practically, I almost blackmailed you to come to church. Anything we had to do, anything we had to do, planning and screaming and shouting. And that is because me, myself, I know we have overburdened you the year. No, because how many ministries do five major events in the year? It doesn't happen. The people will be tired. And here you are repositioned. The people have come. Um, which one is next? Shepherd Summit. They have to come. Bethesda, they have to come. Love Revolution, they have to come. Then you come back with charisma, and they have to come. That is five major in a year. And then the first of the last month to come. So we really want to appreciate you. Well done. And God mightily bless you. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Shall we receive our appointment for the day? Our shepherd to come and close the meeting. God bless you mightily. The Reverend John Walker, come on, welcome. I appreciate Pastor Istu. Keep clapping. Let's appreciate my father, your father. Please, let's do it for him. Thank you so much, Daddy, for tonight. Thank you so much for this morning. Please, let's be on our feet. We want to quickly pray that the Lord will strengthen him and prepare him for tomorrow. Remember, it's 5 a.m. In the name of Jesus. Let's share the grace by saying, We declare that 